welcome to this latest edition of Shed Talk. Um, and in this video, we're going to have a look at the uh, breeding cages and how I set them up and what they they look like. Um, as I uh, nearly always say, this is just the way I do it, the way I find that it works. Um, if you have other ways of doing it, then that's fine. You'll find lots of people do set up their breeding cages in lots of different ways and use lots of different methods. Um, let me know um, how, how you do it. Just leave a, a, a comment in the comments below. Um, as always, if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to hit that uh, like button and you can always subscribe. And if you want early notifications, then do click on the bell. Uh, but we might as well get straight into it then and have a look at my breeding cages. So as I previously said, I do have a relatively small um, setup in terms of uh, breeding cages. I, uh, as you can see here, um, I only have six breeding cages in total, uh, and they are all wire cages, um, as I previously said. Uh, what I would say is that if you are um, starting out on breeding, there's a temptation to um, actually, you know, put lots and lots of breeding cages, lots and lots of birds um, in there. Um, but I would always say you should only breed with the um, numbers that you can reasonably manage. Uh, and, you know, if I doubled the number of cages from 6 to 12, that would double the amount of time I would need to spend um, cleaning them, feeding them in the morning, um, changing the soft food, and all the rest of the stuff that we need to do um, when we are breeding. The breeding season for me is the most intense time of the year in terms of the amount of time it takes and the amount of pressure it puts on you. So um, I'm lucky, I'm retired, so um, it's not too bad. But you know, if you're coming home from work at seven o'clock in the evening and you're trying to um, uh, you know, clean cages out and do all the rest of that and it becomes a bit of a chore, um, then it's not it's not nice and it will be one of the reasons why people um, do give up in the hobby so you know breed with what you can manage if you can manage 40 cages then you can manage 40 cages i myself keep it down to six probably will extend that at some stage but at the moment six is plenty um, keeps me interested and um, means it's not too much of a chore on uh, me when i'm um, down here in the shed uh, working so I, I let said I use um, all wire cages and each of the cages is set up identical so there is no difference between one cage and another. So this is the cage that I use and as previously um, said it's an all wire cage so wire all the way around. I know some people use um, cages that are uh, got plastic sides to them or a plastic back, back. Um, and others use the uh, wooden style um, breeding cages similar to the, the stock cage that you would have seen um, in one of the other videos. Indeed I used the all wooden um, breeding cages previously. I moved over to all wire cages um, for a a few reasons. Uh, first of all, all wire cages tend to be easier to keep clean. Um, there isn't any nooks and crannies for dirt and dust to gather up in. And when at the end of the breeding season, you can just soak them um, and give them a good spray down. So they're easy to keep clean. Um, and there are less areas where mite might gather. So um, it can reduce the um, chances of, of mite. Uh, the open nature of the all wire cages means that it's it's closest it's closer to colony breeding, uh, which of course budgerigars do in the wild. And I I do think there is um, that as as the birds come into breeding condition, uh, that stimulates others to come into breeding condition. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I prefer the wire cages. Of course, I think I mentioned it, it can distract um, other birds. Uh, if a bird next door, if you know, a cock wants to go with a hen that's in a next door cage or whatever. Uh, so that's one thing you might you do need to bear in mind. The all wire cages that I use, the size of them is 
uh, 60 centimetres wide by 40 centimetres deep by 40 centimetres high. Um, I find that's um, plenty big enough. I know some people use slightly smaller cages, some slightly bigger cages. Um, and I know recently there have been some debate about the depth of the cage being used. Increasing the depth can help. Um, but I've used these for some time now and haven't had any problem with them. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that they do have um, all wire bottoms with a pull out tray. Uh, the pull out tray helps in terms of cleaning. So you just pull it out, empty it out. I do put um, paper in the bottom. This just helps a little bit in terms of um, a gathering of particularly, um, you know, the bird waste gathering on there. Um, so it just makes it easier for cleaning. Um, and likewise, the all wire bottom means that the uh, any uh, detritus, any rubbish can drop through. And particularly when you're feeding uh, soft food, um, it prevents a soft food lying around in the cage for a period of time uh, where it can go stale. Once it's dropped through to the bottom, it, um, the birds can no longer access it. I know some people disprove of all wire bottoms of the cages because they can say that it can upset the birds feet and particularly youngsters when they come out of the uh, nest box it can damage their legs if they constantly falling through it. I've not had a problem with that. Um, I do put in the bottom of the all wire cage I, when the youngsters are about to fledge I put in chick hides which obviously have a a bottom to them so if the chicks don't like standing on the all wire cage they can always go into the chick hide um, but I've never noticed any major issues I guess some people do I've not let me know your thoughts I know um, there's there's quite often some debate around the cage bottoms so that's the type of cage that I use then. So let me now quickly talk about what goes in each of the breeding cages. I set them up each breeding cage exactly the same. Whereas the first thing is the main seed dish, um, which you can see here. This in here I just be um, feed a general uh, budgerigar seed that I get from Hayes. I did do a, a video on my seed um, uh, quite a while ago, so I'm sure if you go back um, and have a look, um, you'll be able to find it. Uh, so that's the main seed dish. This gets obviously um, uh, emptied and retopped up daily. The next thing I've got is a small um, two-part dish that goes in the cage. Um, one bit of this contains a tonic seed that you can see here. And the second dish contains, or the second part of the dish contains the uh, soft food that I use. Uh, the soft food contains all of the or the majority of the additives that I um, feed my birds. Uh, again, I did a, a video on my soft food mix um, and I will this time put a link across the top of the screen now so you can do that um, a video if you want to have a look at the soft food and the additives or supplements that I give the birds um, in that soft food mix. Uh, so that's the other dish that's in there. Once again, this gets changed um, daily. So emptied and fresh soft food and tonic seed goes in there. The other thing that I provide each of the cages with is a small um, cup type feeder of a mixture of grit and charcoal. The grit I use is um, a an easily digestible and easily dissolvable grit so um, that's the type of grit that I use and I just use a general uh, charcoal um, in it. And finally each of the cages have a drinker. The drinker gets changed or the water in the drinker gets changed every day um, and what I will do is it's a, a a mixture of a couple of days of just normal water and then a couple of days with a, a supplement in the drinker. The supplement in the drinker that I use is the um, Aviform Avigold Advance and I just dilute it down as per the instructions. So that's what they get in each of the cages.
So now I talk briefly about the net boxes that I use. You probably see that um, I use uh, uh, two different uh, types of net boxes, although they are both fairly similar. They're just um, uh, slightly different styles, and that's just the way um, I've, I've um, uh, bought them when I was as I was expanding the number of breeding cages. So they are box in box type. So what that means is that there is an outside box. Uh, uh, and then a, a box that slips inside it. So uh, this makes it easy to access, as you can see here. Uh, it's just a matter of pulling uh, the inner bit out. Uh, that most people, I think most breeders use um, box in box styles, although the styles do vary, as I say. Um, the size of the nest box, roughly, that I'm using is uh, 24 centimeters uh, deep by 17 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters high. I know some people prefer um, uh, wet, uh, nest boxes that are slightly higher. So in terms of the height of the nest box, uh, slightly higher um, to encourage the chicks to remain in. Uh, I just just because these are the nest boxes that I've always used. So I can't say whether that is better or any worse. Let me know your thoughts. Um, the nest boxes, when they go onto the cage, I don't use uh, concaves, and I know a lot of people use concaves and others don't. My reason for not using concaves is fairly simple. Uh, when I first started out, the breeder I bought um, my initial stock off of didn't use concaves, and therefore the birds weren't used to concaves, so um, I didn't use them either. So instead of that, I what I tend to do is um, I fill the um, the nest box inner up with bedding. So I use um, uh, gold chip um, bedding. Uh, I put that inside, you can see that here. Um, and I fill it up quite deep. And I then let the hen, when I once I've opened the nest box, I let the hen in and she can clear out most of the bedding as she likes. Uh, benefits for this from my point of view is the first one is when she clears it out, um, I can see that she's been in the nest box. So I can see the bits of uh, a bedding over the bottom of the cage floor or over the bottom of the shed floor. So I can see that she's been in there. The second thing is, again, once again, I think this, this um, it sort of stimulates the hen a little bit because in the wild they would be um, excavating their own um, uh, nest in, in, a, in a tree, an old hollow in a tree. They would actually... Um, clear some of that out themselves. So I think it does stimulate the, the hen into breeding condition. Uh, so that's the other reason for it. Of course, the con, as there is always a con, is that um, it wastes quite a bit of bedding because um, most of it goes all over the floor. Uh, what I will do is if she clears it out right down to the very bottom um, before she's laid, I will put a little bit back in. And certainly if she's cleared it right out and then lays, I will put some in. I do find that the hen will stop clearing the nest box once she's laid. Uh, the other thing, if you're going to try this, this or use this method, or if you do use this method, the other thing that I've found is you will occasionally get a hen that won't clear the nest box at all, um, and there is a real risk that she will lay on the top of the um, bedding, the quite deep bedding, and the egg will get pushed underneath it. And, and once you can't see the egg, she'll stop sitting, uh, so the egg will go cold. So if you get a bird that is not going to clear the nest box out, then I would suggest that keep an eye on it. If you find an egg that, that she's laid an egg on top of it, then clear some of it out yourself, so there's not it's not quite so deep. Um, so that's that's the nest box, and that's how I um, use it. So that's my basic cage setup. The final thing I just wanted to, to mention was um, chick hides. Uh, I don't put the chick hide in the cage from the very beginning. Um, it's something I've, I've never done. So um, I don't know uh, where it's, whether people can normally put it in um, right at the beginning or not. Let me know your thoughts on that as always. Um, I use homemade chick hides made out of old uh, uh, these butter or margarine containers um, just with a hole uh, cut in the front. I did do a video on um, uh, chick hides a little while ago and I will try to put a, a link across the top of the screen as usual. Um, so that's the chick hides that I 
um, will normally go in. I will normally put those into the breeding cage uh, around about, you know, when, I, when I'm expecting the young to jump in there. So, you know, a couple of days to a week before I'm expecting the, young, the first youngster to jump in the nest, I'll put it in there. If I get one that jumps early and won't stay in the nest box after I've put it back, then again I'll put a chick hide in there and pop the chick in, into it just to give it some a little bit of protect, protection. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick run around my um, breeding cage setup. Um, as always, if you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Comments are always welcome. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we will be, um, well, the first one I'm hoping will be the um, Oxford 1910 uh, show. Um, if I get a chance to video some of the birds, I will do. Um, and then at the end of the month, we'll hopefully see the um, output of all the effort of those breeding cages and um, with a, an update on how the breeding season is going so far. Um, but until then, uh, please do stay safe and enjoy your birds.